every year when we go into the winter months, obviously more people are becoming concerned about insulating underneath their floors. The bone chilling cold temperature on that floor. During the summertime, we're thinking about our attics, but during the wintertime, I would say maybe 75% of our calls are just about doing underneath the floor. What we run into the most, however, is a major problem if it's not addressed properly. And that is, if you have a fiberglass batting underneath your floor, you probably already know it's not doing much for you. But if you do have fiberglass underneath your floor, obviously we need to remove that before we go ahead and spray closed cell foam to it. Now here's the issue with that is one of the aspects, one of the characteristics that makes fiberglass not a good product is that it, it, it holds moisture. It holds a lot of moisture. It's just a sponge for wetness and moisture. And the closer you are to the ground, the closer you are to higher vapor pressure and more moisture. Um, also, if you have a, a lot of people and a lot of organizations recommend a craft paper backing to it, uh, the, the paper backing facing downwards, when you look on, at your fiberglass bag and you see it will be a, a paper backing to it, paper surface, that is acting as a vapor retarder. That is supposed to retard the, air, the, the flow of moisture coming into your floorboards and into the house, but the problem is once it's in there, it's really not coming out neither. It's stopping from coming out. So that a lot of houses that we're approaching right now, when we remove the fiberglass batting, we see very wet, wet floorboards. A subflooring, or if you have no subflooring, the actual floorboards actually being wet. A lot of times we've seen a, we run into a lot of houses that actually have mold growth underneath on, on the, uh, the floorboards in that case. If you have wet and damp floorboards, first we have to remove the insulation. We have to do that three, four, five, maybe a week ahead of time, and then give the chance, give the opportunity for it, that wetness to breathe out in that case and air out. And then we come back with the closed cell foam. My experience has been most companies, they just tear out, the, just, just for the sake of simplicity, tear out the insulation and go right back in with the closed cell foam. The only problem with that is that you are trapping all that wetness uh, into your floors. Now, if you have a polyurethane coating on your on your nice hardwood floors, that polyurethane coating is an actual vapor barrier, or a very strong vapor retarder. And what happens is if you have wetness underneath your floors and you trap that in with closed cell and now you have your polyurethane coating on top, it's trapped between two vapor retarders in that case and where can the moisture go? It just sits there. If you have any buckling floors, they're certainly not going to come down because it doesn't have the chance to air out. So. Something to really look for when doing closed cell spray foam underneath your house is remove the fiberglass, wait a few days, and then we come back and check it, and we come back and check, and then spray foam after that.